Hello and welcome to the GAC Weekly. I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad that you are with me today. And there are a number of folks that are with me today. We're really getting this next season of this GAC Weekly broadcast going strong. We're going to be hearing from people from all 12 member schools of the Great American Conference. And we're going to get things started today in Weatherford, Oklahoma, as we have a nice panel, a great panel. As a matter of fact, just quite honestly, these are some of my favorite people in the whole sports world, and getting them all together on one screen is is pretty much a privilege. So uh, around clockwise from where I am sitting on your monitor right now, the Assistant Athletic Director for Media Relations, the great Doug Self, is uh, to my right on the screen. Directly below him as we continue clockwise is the head volleyball coach at Southwestern, and that is Josh Collins. And then directly to his left is the head women's basketball coach, Kelsey Music. And guys, listen, a, a lot's happened, I know, since the last time we got to visit personally, got to see each other personally. Uh, Josh, I think it's been the longest for you. It's It's been quite a while since I've had a chance to, to physically get to shake your hand and, and say hi. But, well, that's just the way it is. A lot's going on. So, Kelsey, let me start with you then and, and talk about uh, the basketball team I know that uh, probably your program was affected as directly as anyone's uh, in the entirety of, of Swasu Athletics as uh, you all were headed to the Central Region Women's Basketball Tournament, the NCAA Tournament. Can you at least just bring us up to speed? What happened and where are you all right now? Well, we were actually already in Missouri. Um, we had traveled there late that Wednesday night. We had taken the floor on Thursday. We actually practiced. And while we were on the bus heading to grab some food is when we got the news um, that they had canceled everything. So we were actually there and kind of in the moment um, had one of the best weeks of practice we'd, we'd had in a probably all season, to be real honest. And, you know, it was just a real, real shock. I mean, I guess we kind of in the back of our minds, we kind of thought that something something could happen or it could end because you kind of gotten word and with all of the social media that everyone has at their fingertips, um, you, you kind of knew something could go wrong, but we just, I think we were still having a holding out hope and hoping that, that we would still get that chance to play. Even if it was in front of an empty, empty arena, we were willing to do whatever it took to, to play and step on that court at least one more time for an opportunity to, uh, kind of redeem ourselves from the the GAC tournament where we, you know, we had a, a horrible showing. So um, <laughs> it, it was, it was tough. It was ab abrupt. It was something you've never, you, you never thought would really happen, um, but it did. When, when you look back on the season, obviously that abrupt in, ending is, is really one of the things that will characterize this, this year. Now as a whole, I don't think there's any way around that, but you do look back on the season and it's, it's an, <laughs> CAA tournament qualifying season yet again for your program. Uh, uh, talk about that for a moment. You know, I think a lot of people um, probably didn't expect us to be very good, obviously, when you lose a Haley Tucker and a Hayden Pretty. Um, for this team to really rise, especially at the end of the season, we had some must-win games in order to be um, co gac champions of the regular season. And you know, our backs were kind of against the wall and we had to win. And my team rose to the occasion and, and really showed up and made some big plays and some big comebacks. And we were able to to still, you know, seal that deal at the end of the year. And, and that was really special considering what we had lost and probably what most people, you know, didn't expect us to finish at the top at all. Um, so it was a really special season and we'd faced some adversity and you know, it was definitely a different team, but they were still a really good team, and and I couldn't have been more proud of them. So it, as far as the season as a whole, it, it was a really special season. Just for it to end so abruptly was, I don't know, it kind of took your breath away. <laughs> and you're right. I, I'm in, in my wildest imagination, I, I did not come up with that scenario, and it's it's just one of those things that, wow, we, we will always remember this. There is no doubt. You know, uh, Josh, during that time, and I know you're you're close to the the basketball team as well. You do a lot, pretty much with with everything that goes on there, dealing with operations and and uh, things like that. But you know, it wasn't that uh, you you get to travel up the road and do some conference work as well. And it seems like we should have been visiting about a week ago, 
uh, as you would be up the road in Enid working with the Great American Conference baseball tournament. So you feel a, you feel the gap of not getting to be involved in baseball? Yeah, for sure. I think that on that uh, championship day, Doug had mentioned something about, you know, right now we should be in Enid. And uh, it's it's an event that we all look forward to. And it's fun to catch up with you and, you know, all the other people around the GAC. And so when we didn't have that opportunity, just like so many things that we've uh, so many opportunities that we've lost because of this, it, it stung a little bit. Uh, Coach, then let's let's talk about your your volleyball team because uh, in in light of all this, you would have spring events going and and uh, prepping for your fall sport for the next season as well. Uh, what have you been going through right now in the meantime? Well, uh, you know, we don't have anybody on campus, and so uh, mostly just doing what all the other coaches in the country are doing and and trying to stay in contact with our student athletes who are all at home and. Uh, try to make sure that they remain safe first and foremost, but also uh, that they're diligent in the classroom and they are also, you know, thinking about the fact that hopefully we're going to return here in a few months and uh, start playing volleyball again. So we want to make sure that they're, you know, running every once in a while and jumping every once in a while too. So, uh, you know, we're always looking for commonalities between us and the women's basketball program. And we finally found one this year where, we took an early bow out of the tournament too. So <laughs> that's not the commonality I want with the women's basketball program here, but we, we had that in common. So, you know, we were hungry and, and we were excited about the spring and we were prepared to get better and hopefully have a better showing next year. So, um, you know, it, we're, we're adapting just like everybody else is. And uh, I think that there's a lot of positives that are going to come out of this, even though there are quite a few negatives. You know, I can I can see that, and it's funny you mentioned that that that's the one commonality, not necessarily one that either one of you I'm sure would like uh, to have in common. But you have some fantastic programs there, the both of you, and and uh, I think each one uh, definitely uh, would would push the other one, and and uh, and and both as representing the school well. And speaking about representing the school well, Doug Self, by the way, who is the man, the myth, the legend. I believe not only at Southwestern, but also in the Great American Conference. Uh, man, I, I miss getting to see you in baseball as well. And and I know the last time we saw each other uh, was in Bartlesville. Surely did not think that would be the last broadcast. When I was driving back from Bartlesville, did not think that would be the last broadcast that I did this athletic year. But do you have any free time now? I mean, you know, there, there aren't <laughs> many games to to write about. What are you doing with all that time? Yeah, I mean, I can definitely agree with you. I think when we were driving home from Bartlesville, the last thing on my mind was I've just covered my final sporting event and, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, so I went from literally the busiest time of the year, the crossover season, which had been going on since the first week of February till that, the second week of March. And, you know, we were excited for it to continue as long as, you know, the women's basketball team had a run in them again, um, but went right from that, from the busiest event or the busiest time with events, probably four or five days a week to nothing literally overnight. So that was, it was different. It took a little getting used to, I know I had a spring break for the first time and I don't know how long. And that was, I, I enjoyed it, but it was, it was strange just sitting at home and not only, you know, did we not have any events going on, but there was, you know, nothing to watch, nothing, you know, to do really, but just kind of sit back and reflect and, you know, take some time to yourself to just kind of, for me, it was, you know, just to kind of get rested, refreshed, um, you know, and kind of refocused, remotivated, and, which is the stuff I'm usually doing this week. This is, you know, the week after graduation. That's when Weatherford usually turns into a ghost town and you take a deep breath. We take a step back, maybe play a little kickball here and there or something to kind of get our minds right. But, um, you know, I've already had two months of doing that. So, so now <laughs> I'm rearing and ready to go. And it's just now starting to be summer. You know, I was going to ask you that to, to ask about the motivation on your end. And, and as always, you're on top of it. You already answered the question there and trying to, to stay motivated. So, coaches, I'll address the question then to you. Has it been a challenge to to keep yourselves motivated then, not just keeping the, the, the athletes motivated, but yourselves? Coach, go ahead. Well, I think – it's been hard because for so long, nothing was even open. I mean, they, they can't get into a gym. There's, they, they can't go shoot baskets. Everything's shut down. And so that's a, a really hard, a hard moment for an athlete to, 
to not have those luxuries that were at your fingertips where they could get in the gym just about any time, get in a weight room. And, and for all those weeks, everything was shut down. And fortunately in Oklahoma, things are starting to open back up, but there are a lot of states that aren't. And that's just such an eerie, odd feeling to not have those luxuries that, you know, that make an athlete who they are to a certain extent of, you know, for us, a basketball and a rim, you know, they were even <laughs> taping off the, the parks that were open outside. I mean, right. you can't, you can't do anything. And so for a while, I mean, the, they, they didn't have what, what they were so used to. And I think now, you know, we've sent out summer workouts and our kids are hopefully having that opportunity to get back in the gym, but we just try to keep them focused on their studies because that's the one and only thing that they really could do from home is, is finish out the semester strong and make sure they pass their classes. So that was kind of our focus at the end, just making sure they stayed on top of that. Because like I said, all of the things that would, you know, help propel them to be better, all they could do is, is maybe run a little bit, but at, you know, in some places that was even hard to do. Right. Right. Josh. Yeah. I think that, you know, we were again, forced to adapt and kind of like coach is saying, we, had to think outside of the box a little bit and try to figure out ways. Um, our, our main concern is, you know, in the spring for a volleyball player, they're going to jump 10, 12,000 times or whatever. I don't know what the exact numbers are, but they're going to jump a lot of times. And now, you know, we're going to have them not jumping at all and then come back in August and tell them to jump a ton, you know, in that first day. And so uh, we're trying to make sure that they find ways to get jumps in and, and not just – you know, I think so many times kids are just thinking, well, I'll, you know, I'll run a mile three times a week. and That'll keep me in shape. But that doesn't necessarily keep you in shape for uh, volleyball. They need to right. jump more than they need to run. So we had to think outside of the box a little bit there and then just trying to keep myself motivated to, you know, develop my skills in the in the coaching ranks. And uh, our football team here has done a good job of putting out some stuff and uh, was lucky enough to join that. Um, and, and talk a little bit about what we do. And that just forced me to kind of think about what we do. And, um, you know, so I've already kind of started uh, preparing some things that I usually start preparing in July and, and early August. So hopefully we'll be ahead of the curve when, uh, whenever it is that we get to resume. Well, you know what? I, and I have no doubt about that at all. And, get, and getting those things ready, you do have, I, it's not really a luxury, but it is an opportunity to definitely get a jump on things that that you probably haven't had before you uh, all put out a video and, and specifically uh, coach music I want to address uh, you on this one right here a video to give closure to the seniors who did not get that closure and as all the productions at uh, Southwestern and the video production lately has just been fantastic talk about that then and in, in giving the seniors then a, an opportunity to have uh, a little bit more closure than they did. It was a great video, Coach. Oh, thank you. I couldn't have done that without Doug and Jacob. I mean, they made that video happen. I mean, they just took my words. And, you know, I was one night late at night, and I finally had the opportunity to, I don't know, it just hit me. And I just started putting my words to, to paper. And all of a sudden, um, I decided that, you know, social media is kind of an outlet for everybody to a certain extent. And I finally just posted it on Facebook and it was, you know, I put it out there and the next morning I get a call from Doug and he's like, like you, you want to try to make a video? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, it, it would definitely <laughs> reach more people and uh, hopefully impact my players a little bit more. And, you know, they took my words and of course, Doug and Jacob are phenomenal at what they do and we couldn't be as good in the media world without them. I mean, we're, we're extremely blessed to have them and they, they always make us look good. Even when, uh, even whenever we don't, uh, they always make us look good. And so um, it was just a blessing to have them and to be able to put that out there and, and reach so many people. And I think, you know, one of my players texted me and said that your words were gold coach and you, you said what we've all been thinking. And so it was kind of neat to actually, put those words out there because we'd all been thinking it, we'd all been feeling it, but nobody had had the opportunity to say it. Well, coach, they were, they were indeed. And we're going to put the link to that video in the description here on the YouTube channel at MidwestSports.net. By the way, MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel is the home 
of the GAC Weekly. So please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. I was concerned for just a little bit that the volleyball program's uh, budget had been cut and the lights were gone. So, uh, Josh, I'm glad to I'm glad to see that uh, <laughs> you're able to get there. Kind of jumping jacks every once in a while. You know why? <laughs> Stay active in that room, yeah. uh, or you lose your lights. Doug, let me uh, toss that back to you really quickly. You guys do a fantastic job, and the the video production, and I'll let you talk about this and and what all's involved. Really has stepped up its game this year. Yeah, so I mean, it's really been the last two years. Um, at the beginning of last school year, you know, I had a student by the name of Jacob Cope who just walked into my office and said, you know, I'd like to make a hype video for the football team. I said, all right, you know, that's one thing that I have not had the time or the skills, you know, to, to pick up as a video production side of things. So, you know, we just we kind of hired him on sight unseen, really. He showed me some of his work and, um, you know, we kind of just let him go to work and, you know, he was along for the ride. Um, you know, last year as we made the run through the national championship and the stuff just kept getting better, better and better. And then I think we all saw this year that that first year is kind of a learning curve. And then that second year is where you can really like he know he knew what to expect. He you know, came with new, fresh ideas. And, um, you know, I think we took it to another level this year. And what's kind of disappointing about how the season ended is, you know, we had some great stuff planned for the NCAA tournament and, um, uh, we even, you know, shout out to old Zach Saunders because he had done a voiceover for the for the first round of the NCAA tournament. And Jacob was about halfway through that video and we had to scrap it. And it was it was another thing. We took a lot of um, Coach Music's words and the things that she likes to say to a team and put it with someone else's voice. And it was it was really cool to see that come together. That just kind of, you know, pulls, you know, our whole family aspect. You know, everybody's pulling for each other in those moments, especially when you get to the postseason, and we had already had talks of, you know, when the baseball team gets to the conference tournament, maybe we turn it around and have coach music do a voiceover or something like that for them. Um, so that stuff will get, you know, pushed back to next year, but, you know, it's really been the ability to hire, you know, Jacob and then my graduate assistant Clemson Lancaster. Um, they've done a great job of making me look good at my job and making us continue to look good, you know, on the social media world and the digital media world. Um, and, you know, we're uh, we're always being active, trying to do the best we can. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to step it up next season. We're here on the GAC Weekly with Doug Self and Josh Collins and Kelsey Music. And, uh, guys, just a couple more questions really quickly. This one to the coaches as you know, there's a tie there into the volleyball department once again with Clemson, Coach Collins. And so I'm telling you, you talk about family, and it definitely is a family at Southwestern. Uh, you you both had someone that was honored with one of the headline honors in the recent uh, banquet, virtual sports banquet, uh, being an athlete or a student athlete of the year. And uh, we're talking about uh, Caitlin Dillon for the volleyball program, Tyra Aska for the uh, women's basketball program. So coaches, you were well represented in that too. Uh, Josh, if you would talk, talk about uh, what Caitlin's meant to your team. Uh you know, when, when I started talk, uh, just talking on that video and I was thinking about, you know, what Kate's meant to us, uh, I realized that I don't think she ever missed a single play uh, that she was legally, by definition of volleyball rules, able to take part in the game. She played every single, not only every single match, every single set, but every single play that she could have. She was on the floor for four years. Um, and, uh, you know, as big as that impact is on the court, she was a phenomenal player, uh, probably one of the best defensive players that our league's ever seen. Um, she was even better for our community, for our, our locker room, for um, just the campus. Um, she's a, an incredible kid, um, smart, funny, fun, um, great teammate. Like, you just can't there, – there's not enough words to say about her. So – uh, we were very excited that she got Scholar Athlete of the Year. Uh, it was very much deserved, and and she's a great kid. Coach Music, uh, as uh, Tyra Aska, of course, we mentioned Caitlin Dillon, the Scholar Athlete of the Year. Tyra Aska, the Athlete of the Year, Female Athlete of the Year, and and she has represented your program well also during these years. I mean, Tyra has been a really special player for us. I mean, we've had some really good ones come through our program but um tyra is by far one of the well the best defender that we've ever had and may ever have come through this program by far um 
just her her IQ, it's phenomenal. I mean, she she had an understanding of what we expected and what we wanted on both ends of the floor. I think offensively, she was really able to to really grow and become a, a better offensive player. I mean, she's always been able to score, but she really did advance her game and and be able to to shoot it, to start shooting it deep off the line. She could get to the rim and she was just a physical specimen. I mean, she she was so strong naturally and she just had a, a will to win and she was a competitor. She was a good teammate. You know, I just, I just remember her, uh, you know, when, when moments when we needed something to happen, she, she always ended up being right in the middle of it, uh, making something positive happen, whether it was getting a tip, getting a steal, getting a big rebound or, or whatnot. She's been a impeccable, huge part of our program for the last four years. She's definitely left a legacy, um, but she's kind of a quiet soul, um, you know, off the floor. But, you know, we were able to really get her to open up and have a special bond with her. And she's definitely going to be greatly missed. I always say that, you know, we have to reload because you can't replace certain players. And she's one of those players that you can't replace. Um, she's got a special place in Swasu history, that's for sure. Um, and just, just what she's able to do on and off the floor. I mean, she's just a, a really good person and, a, and just a quality player. We'll, we'll wrap things up as we are headed now into a new academic year, a new athletic year. Okay, it's really not going to happen until July 1st, but as far as we're concerned on the GAC Weekly, we've started the new year because we're just, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that I can wait much longer. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I may be a little bit antsy on that, but we're just, uh, we're headed into our, our new year as it is right now. And for the Great American Conference, it's a milestone year because it will be the tenth year of the GAC as an active conference. And Kelsey, let me go back to you to start there and we'll go around the horn and, and wrap things up. It It is really a great conference and it definitely has grown. I believe your step to the national championship game last year with the women's basketball program was a huge step for the conference in, in building it up, but uh, it, it has been growing as well. I mean, definitely. I think it's really been a huge step. I mean, it's kind of neat. I was here in the inaugural year and to, to really be able to watch this conference come along, um, we've made huge strides. And I think that we've definitely made, made moves in the right direction to put our conference where we need to be and put it on the map. I think initially, you know, we didn't get the respect that um, the Great American Conference deserved, but I think there's been a lot of really good teams and this conference has grown and made the right decisions to put us in a spot to be nationally known. So um, I, I think it's, it's a great conference and I'm excited about our future. Coach Collins, you are one of the, uh, the headliners, I believe then with the uh, volleyball in division two as the, uh, you know, ex executive director of the, the committee, uh, I believe if I've gotten that, that, title properly if i haven't correct me it's okay i can handle that but i know that you do a lot of work on a national level as well but you know you've had all this time to get to to see the the gac grow and have been a part of some very good teams and sending uh representatives to the national level as well talk about the gac from your perspective yeah um so it, the actual title is not executive director that would probably uh require me to get chewed out on the phone <laughs> to do, but uh, correct Executive uh, council, is that right? Chair, chair of the national committee. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so, hey, um, listen, I'm elevating you. You just got a raise, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that experience was really fun. It was fun to see our conference grow in those four years that I was on the national committee and just see us uh, garner more and more respect as a volleyball conference each year. Um, and, you know, uh, last year, uh, shout out to Harding uh, University. They, they went uh, to the University of Nebraska, Kearney. And, um, you know, they were the eight seeds and they knocked knocked out the one seed at their home court last year uh, in that first round. And then uh, had a really strong uh, match in their second match against Concordia St. Paul. And, uh, you know, Meredith does a great job there at Harding. Uh, and so kind of like what uh, Coach Music and the basketball program did for uh, women's basketball and, and the GAC, uh, Harding kind of made some noise in a really, really good volleyball region uh, last year and kind of gave us more recognition within the whole country. So um, it's just fun to see uh, our teams uh, from top to bottom, really. Uh, you know, this year, uh, going into the conference tournament, really any of the eight teams that were in the conference tournament could have won that. Um, and so 
uh, we saw, you know, Harding knock us out in the first round. We were, uh, you know, tied for second at the end of the co uh, conference season and uh, ended up being the three seed and, and Harding upset us in the first round and uh, had a really good match against Oklahoma Baptist in the second round, who was a one seed. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, everybody is, uh, you know, getting better. Uh, and so it's fun to see our conference grow. And what I think sets us apart is we enjoy being around each other. And I see it from working with the various sports. Uh, all the coaches enjoy being around each other. The support staff enjoy being around each other. Uh, people want to give back and, and help in other ways. And, uh, you know, that really uh, feels like home for uh, those of us at Southwestern because that's how our campus works too. Uh, and so, you know, the, the GAC is just like an extension of that family. I completely understand, and and I agree, and I I th think that's one of the things about the GAC that really steps stands out to me is family. Well, Doug, I'm not going to promote you like I promoted uh, Josh just a moment ago. I I don't know that I really have the authority to do that, so uh, we'll just limit that. But you you've seen the Great American Conference grow, and and you've uh, you know been a part of it for so many aspects. Talk about your your vantage. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what I have to say would echo what Coach Collins said. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to see a lot of great championship events. Um, you know, my first year here, I got hired to do stats for the basketball tournament and that's continued ever since. And I don't know if that's, um, you know, them saying it's something they think I'm good at, or I'm the only person foolish enough willing to sit in a chair for 14 <laughs> games over four days and stat basketball. But, um, you know, I always look forward to those events. And I even remember this year we were sitting up there in Bartlesville and we we're talking about, man, can you imagine that first weekend in Enid where there's going to be four baseball games a day starting at 10 a.m.? We're like, man, that's going to be – there's going to be some brutally long days. And then I think, like Coach said earlier, um, a couple weekends ago, we were sitting around thinking, man, what I wouldn't be give, you know, to be up in the press box at David Allen right now watching, you know, a matinee baseball game. Um you know, we really look forward to those things, those opportunities to reconnect with people. You know, you you may email them or talk to them on the phone or by text throughout the year, but nothing beats, you know, the opportunity to actually sit down. And especially in a baseball press box, there's a lot of time to sit and talk because, you know, there's just games take a little while. And, you know, you guys are talking nonstop over there on the air, but there's also, you know, a lot of side conversations or a lot of different stuff going on. And it just allows us a chance to network with those people who have become friends over the years. So uh, we definitely missed out on that opportunity, but I think we'll also, you know, when those opportunities are presented again, we're really going to, um, will mean a little extra to us when we get to see, you know, get to be together with our friends again and, you know, doing what we love, which is, you know, covering sporting events. No doubt. Well, this conference is a good conference. It is in fact a great conference. And it is showing more and more the greatness that is there. But part of that is due, I believe, in large part to people like uh, those that are on the screen with me right now. And so I want to say thanks to you all. You all represent not only Southwestern well, but you represent the Great American Conference well. And I appreciate the, the opportunity to get to visit with you on screen and then off screen as well. And in the times that uh, we get to see each other at the conference and, and uh, just even local events. So I want to say thanks then to Doug Self, to Josh Collins, to Kelsey Music for being with me today on the GAC Weekly. We are getting this next year going. I believe it's going to go strong. I know everything is pending. I realize that and recognize that. But uh, you know what? I'm kind of Pollyanna every now and again. I get called that, and that's okay. I'm always going to look for the best and believe for the best. So that's what we're looking for, and I can't wait to get to see uh, Coach Music and Coach Collins, your teams on the courts again in 2020, 2021. It's right around the corner, I believe. So we'll, we'll just have a good summer, get those leaps in, and thank you all for being with me on the GAC Weekly today. Thank you, Joey. Thanks, Joey. Go dogs. <laughs> All right. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Please do subscribe to the channel, MidwestSports.net. In the meantime, we're going to keep this going back a little while later tomorrow with the next GAC Weekly. In the meantime, God bless you. Have a great day.